late one night, an outdoorsman's friend decided to stop by his campsite to surprise him. They were hoping to have a few drinks and catch up with a friend, but what they found when they arrived was unnerving and totally unexplainable. What follows is the story of one of the most mysterious disappearances in the last 40 years. Even to this day, almost no clues have been discovered and no arrests have been made. What has emerged, however, are numerous theories and plenty of suspicion. And it all started with a simple camping trip. Michael Larry Madden, known to most as Mike, was by all accounts a kind and gentle soul. He was born in a small town called Modesto in the Sonora area of California, and he grew up spending time with both of his divorced parents, Larry and Ardell. Family and friends were very important to Mike, and he was described by all as a sweet and goofy personality who liked to keep to himself. He had a tight-knit group of buddies, and he kept a great relationship with his mother and his half-brother, Randy Powell. But for the most part, Mike was known as a loner who loved the outdoors. In fact, the outdoors were sort of Mike's whole thing. He was a wildlife biology major at Humboldt State University in Arcata, California, where everyone knew him to be an experienced outdoorsman who loved to hike, camp, fish, climb, and explore. He even aspired to have a career in nature, and he grew up telling everyone that he hoped to one day become a U.S. Forest Service Ranger. So when Mike told his friends and family that he was going camping alone in August of 1996, nobody batted an eye especially because he was going to Sandbar Flats, an area he had gone to with his father Larry many times. It was a campground off of the Stanislav River, southeast of Sacramento, and Mike seemed to think of it as more of a backyard than an actual wilderness. So at about 5 a.m. on the morning of August 10th, 1996, Mike packed up his Chevrolet Cavalier, grabbed his dog Matilda, and left his mother a note on the kitchen counter telling her where he was going. And then, for the last time, he drove out into the wilderness. Mike was 20 years old at the time, and his missing persons report lists him as a 6'1 Caucasian male with hazel eyes, brown hair, and 3-inch surgical scar on his collarbone. It also listed that he was wearing a t-shirt, shorts, a San Francisco Giants hat, and a watch. Authorities know that he arrived at Sandbar Flats and set up his camp, but anything other than that is completely unknown. Perhaps he went fishing or hiking and took a nasty fall, or perhaps something much, much worse happened. Even to this day, nobody can prove anything. What we do know is that late in the night of August 12th at about 2 a.m., some of Mike's friends pulled into camp. Earlier that evening, Mike's best friend Josh, his friend Manuel, Josh's girlfriend Shannon, and their mutual friend Ramona decided to take an impromptu trip to watch a meteor shower in a nearby town. But while they were on the road, they decided to stop by Mike's campsite to say hello, as they knew where he would always go. But when they arrived, they found a confusing scene. Mike and Matilda were nowhere in sight, despite the fact that their things were neatly arranged and the fire had fresh wood in it. Mike's friends searched the nearby forest, but it was late and very dark. When they couldn't find any trace of their friend, they returned to the fire to wait for him. And that's when things got truly creepy. A man suddenly stepped out of the darkness carrying a 45 automatic pistol. His name is Joseph Tyne, and his appearance made all of Mike's friends incredibly nervous. He popped out of the trees asking the group if they were here for Mikey, a nickname Michael had never gone by before. But that wasn't the truly unnerving part. According to Manuel, Joseph stepped out speaking a mile a minute. He said he was startled because Mikey didn't say anyone was coming and that he had left and was long gone. Manuel also said that Joseph seemed under the influence of something as he was talking about shooting a creature with three eyes and that he spent the entire night whispering to a bush and repeatedly cocking his pistol. And so Michael's friends waited all night next to a man they didn't know, sitting in the pitch black accompanied by the sound of a gun cocking. The next day it became clear that Mike wasn't coming back. So he was reported missing and a search and rescue swept the entire area. But they wouldn't find anything at all. That is, until Mike's dog, Matilda, returned to the campsite four days later. She came back dehydrated and tired, but she hadn't lost any weight and her feet weren't damaged. This was surprising given that she was lost in the California hills for close to four days. The police were hoping that she would provide some help in leading investigators to Mike's whereabouts, but unfortunately, the trail went cold. And that is the last factual update in the disappearance of Mike Madden. For some unknown reason, the cops called off the search in Sandbar Flats the same day Matilda turned up, and Michael's case began to fade into memory. 
But as the legal proceedings surrounding the disappearance slowed, the speculations from Michael's family and friends only began to escalate. The first loudest and most obvious accusations came from Michael's friends, Manuel and Josh, and they point towards Joseph Tyne. Manuel recounts that Joseph was acting incredibly erratically, and Josh reports that Joseph was eating Michael's food and burning his firewood as if he knew he wasn't coming back. The friends even reported that they believed Joseph was wearing Mike's boots when they arrived. Manuel went as far as saying that he believes Joseph was in the woods cooking drugs and Mike stumbled across him at the wrong time. Of course, Joseph was questioned by the police, and he even passed a polygraph test regarding what happened at the camp. And while the suspicions of him definitely seem well-founded, the police never made an arrest. But Joseph Tyne isn't the only person who's had the finger pointed at them. Randy Powell, Michael's much older half-brother, has this much to say about Mike's so-called friends. Michael's so-called friends never once offered to help us search. Not once did they come over after Mike's disappearance to talk with us about what had happened. Not one single freaking time did his so-called friends offer to help, come by the house, or call to see how things were going. And these friends who had shown up at 2.30 a.m., two guys, two girls, to watch a meteor shower while under influence of acid, meth, green wheat, are the ones who gave the information to cops about what had transpired, but not until a week later after having time to get their story straight. They reported Mike missing the next morning at 11 a.m. to a park ranger, then left the area. But they returned at night after search and rescue left and searched through Mike's car, broke into the trunk, then left before daylight. I think his friends are full of it. So Joseph Tyne and Mike's friends have both received some side eye, but the buck doesn't stop there. A family friend of Michael's mom named Helen Purvis believes Mike's father, Larry, had something to do with it, despite the fact that his alibi puts him in Oregon at the time. She cites the apparently volatile relationship they had where Larry would cause turmoil and steal and that he might have arranged something bad. There is even another theory where the possessive boyfriend of a girl Michael loved might have had Joseph Tyne kill Mike as the two men grew up in the same neighborhood. This one, however, is admittedly a little more fringe. But despite all of these ideas, there isn't any conclusive evidence to back anything up. The only thing everyone can agree on is that the police horribly mishandled the investigation. After all, they did call off the search the same day they found Matilda, their most significant piece of evidence, and everyone involved said that investigators missed several ways they could have looked further into Mike's disappearance. They apparently never checked Matilda's stomach to see what she had been eating to maintain her weight, and they didn't even bring in hounds to retrace Matilda's trail after she returned to the campsite. So while Mike's disappearance seems like it may never be explained, Hopefully, it can serve as a learning experience for the California State Police. Do you think Joseph Tyne killed Michael Madden? Or are his friends hiding something after all? Be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and if you have a dark crime tale you want to see, leave us a suggestion in the comments.